Bento grids are cool and let's explore how to create a quick grid for Bento usage. I'm going to share two variations, a horizontal and a vertical. Let's start with the horizontal version. The grid we are going to make will consist of rectangle blocks. So first we are going to add a rectangle to our canvas. Enable the transform panel and adjust the width and the height to a 2 to 1 ratio. For simplification, I'm going to use 200 and 100 pixels. Remember, we can always resize the final grid to the desired size. This is our building block and from this we are going to create a drawing grid for our bento. Press enter to open up the move and duplicate window. I want to have 10 pixels of space between the blocks. Our block we defined at 200 so I'm going to enter 210 for the horizontal offset and turn on the duplicate checkbox, so that we are getting copies. Number of copies will be 5, with as a result we will have 6 columns. Now we have our columns, time to create the number of rows. But before doing that, let's select all the blocks and group them. With the group selected, press enter to open up the move and the duplicate dialog again. This time we are going to make copies in the vertical direction. Our block has a height 100. We used 10 for spacing, so the value will be 110. If you used another value for spacing, add that value to your block height. Turn on the duplicates again and for the number of copies I'm going to use 8, which as an end result will give us a building grid of 6 by 9, which has a nice horizontal ratio. Please feel free to adjust the columns and rows to your needs. To keep things a bit organized, I'll group everything together. Now we have a drawing grid, which we can use to create our bento grid. A bit of an inception effect happening here. A grid to create another grid. Make sure snapping is turned on and use the rectangle tool to draw the bento rectangles. With the help of the snapping, you should be able to align your bento rectangles within the grid. Usually there is a bit of delay before the snapping kicks in probably due to the fact it needs to find an element in a group. Usually I quickly draw my rectangles and if needed I can adjust them and snap them. It is not the best bender grid I created, but you get the point. So time for the vertical grid. The idea is exactly the same, but we are going to use a different ratio for the grid blocks and for the final grid. The block rectangle will be 60 by 90. Again, I'm going to use a 10 pixel space. So in the first duplicate action, I'm going to use 74 horizontal and have 9 duplicates, resulting in 10 columns. For the raw generation, I'll use again the spacing of 10 pixels, resulting in a vertical offset of 100 and the number of copies will be 11. We got ourselves a nice vertical grid we can use to create our bento grid. Just like with the horizontal version, Draw the bento boxes on the grid and align them to the blocks. Let your creativity go wild, but as you can see today is not my creative day, so I'll stop drawing the bento grid. If you watch closely, you might have noticed in my assets panel I have a grids category. It contains the two bento grids we have created. I can just drag and drop them to the canvas, and as a bonus it even has a sample bento. And here is the vertical variant. Pretty awesome. The best thing is that you can download this for free. But a coffee is much appreciated. It is my personal collection of grids I made over the years and I'm guessing you're already familiar with most of these grids. There are some interesting ones, like this root tree version. I'm not going to dig deeper into these grids as it's a big giant rabbit hole and before you know it you're only designing grids. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. By the way, if you wondered how I created the bento grid in the beginning of the video, here is a quick walkthrough. I just used a bento grid to align the bento elements, added graphics inside the bento rectangles in erase blend mode, so the graphics are cut out from the rectangle. Finally, a gradient as the background and because the bento elements have transparent areas, you get this cool effect. Hope you enjoyed this video and until the next video.